to the cellar. It was October 1970. Donna Dahl was a 21-year-old college student at Northern Illinois University. Northern Illinois University is a public research university that is located in DeKalb, Illinois. Donna was studying Russian and attending the school on a scholarship. Her ultimate goal was to one day become a teacher. That was her dream. But those dreams would turn into a nightmare. While attending school, Donna also worked part-time at the Swen Parson Library, which was located on campus. Donna was living off campus at the time in a rooming house located along the West Lincoln Highway. For those that don't know, a rooming house is a multi-tenant house where the different bedrooms are rented out. Typically in scenarios like this, the tenants will share a kitchen and potentially bathrooms. Diving deeper into Donna's personal life, it was reported that she had recently broken up with her boyfriend, Charles Burke, who was a math student. According to reports from friends of Donna, Charles was controlling and extremely possessive. Donna was not happy in this relationship, and during the summer of 1970, Donna attended a foreign language program in Pennsylvania. While attending, she met another man who she became involved with. This led to her breaking things off with Charles. Now, in researching the case, I found some reports that the man that she met in Pennsylvania was still married, while some reports stated he was recently separated from his wife. No matter where the truth lies, Donna really liked this man and found him to be the polar opposite of Charles. Nonetheless, Charles was absolutely devastated when Donna broke up with him. That now brings us to Friday, October 2nd, 1970. Donna was working at the library that day and had made plans to hang out with a friend of hers named Donna Charlotte. To avoid confusion, I will refer to Donna's friend as simply Charlotte. Charlotte planned to come by when Donna finished her shift so they could go for a drive and catch up. From all reports, Donna clocked out at 9.59 p.m. at the library. Charlotte showed up to pick Donna up and would proceed to wait around for 20 minutes, but Donna would never show. At the time, she wasn't overly worried. She just figured Donna had something else come up. But Donna would never make it home that night. In fact, Donna would never be seen alive again. According to her roommates, no one was initially worried. They figured Donna had made a trip to Pennsylvania to spend time with her love interest. But once Sunday night rolled around and there was still no sign of Donna, her roommates became worried. The police would eventually be called and Donna was officially reported missing around 48 hours after she had clocked out of her shift at the library. As the police began their investigation, the first thing they noticed was that Donna had left all her belongings behind in her bedroom. But right off the bat, they didn't seem overly concerned. It wasn't until the next day when she would miss her classes at the university that it would become ever more apparent that something was wrong. It wasn't like Donna to miss her classes. With the police still not taking things overly serious, Donna's friends and family, including her ex-boyfriend Charles, started setting up search parties. But no sign of Donna was found. That was until October 11th, a full nine days after Donna finished her shift at the library. According to reports, a group of teenagers were heading to a party. Prior to heading to that party, the group wanted to recover some beer that they had hidden in some tall grass along Nelson Road. I did some research and found that Nelson Road was roughly 1.8 miles from the Northern Illinois University campus. As the teenagers arrived and located their beer, they would make a horrifying discovery. The body of a woman. The 
upon seeing this, the group would immediately leave the scene and go and contact the local police department. When the police arrived on scene, they were able to quickly come to the conclusion that this body was that of Donna Dahl. Ultimately, her ex-boyfriend Charles would be contacted and he would be the one to positively ID the body. Donna Dahl had finally been located. But what happened to the young, talented woman who had so much life left before her? We will now dive into the evidence in this case. First, diving into what Donna was and wasn't wearing when her body was found. Donna was first and foremost fully clothed, except she wasn't wearing any shoes. On top of that, she was wearing a jacket, but this was not the jacket she had last been seen wearing. Her purse, her shoes, and the trench coat she had last been seen wearing would never be located. Following an autopsy, some more bizarre pieces of information would come to light. It was ultimately determined that Donna's cause of death was due to suffocation, but no fibers of any kind were found within her airways, which is unusual in the death due to suffocation. It was also determined that Donna was still alive for upwards of 48 hours after she had left the library that night. Where did she go during this time? What was she doing? Was she being held against her will? Well, in some of the reports, I found that there was no sign of struggle. This has led many to believe that Donna knew who her murderer was. But it gets even more bizarre than that. During her autopsy, her stomach contents were checked. In her stomach, they found five to six pounds of potatoes. That's a lot of potatoes. This just opens up so many questions. Was someone force-feeding her potatoes in the 48 hours before her life was extinguished? So now the question becomes, who took the life of Donna Dahl? Well, it wouldn't take police long to focus in on the ex-boyfriend, Charles Burke. The first red flag was the original searches that Charles had been a part of. It was reported that Charles and the group that he was searching with had stopped around a quarter mile before they would have potentially located Donna's body. Another red flag would come once Charles found out he was a prime suspect within the case, as Charles would try to take his own life after finding out. Charles would end up surviving this attempt, and he would soon obtain legal representation. His legal representation would make a statement that Charles was being extremely cooperative with the police even going as far as offering to take a polygraph test. Whether that test was ever done has never been released to the public. At this point in the story, I wish that I could tell you that the police found more evidence and eventually solved the case. But that's not how things would go. The police would continue to investigate, but as with a lot of cases, days would turn to weeks, weeks to months, and eventually months would turn to years. Donna's case would go cold, and it has been almost 54 years now, and her case still to this very day remains unsolved. With no new leads or suspects, Donna's friends and family have never gotten the closure they deserve. Do I believe that Charles had something to do with her death? Well, I can't rule it out. He was possessive, controlling, and had motive due to Donna breaking up with him. I just hope that one day, Donna's case can be solved, and justice can finally be served to whoever the perpetrator was. As always, my deepest condolences go out to all the friends and family of Donna Dahl. Thank you all for tuning in to another episode. If you enjoy the content, please hit that like and subscribe button. It helps the channel continue to grow. Also, you can check the description box below and find the link to my merch store. Tons of awesome designs and the proceeds help fund the channel. For those of you that are interested, I have a Seller Dwellers membership tier for the channel. It's $2.99 a month and comes with some pretty cool perks. So if that interests you, then please go check it out. I also have that linked in the description box below. If you'd like to submit your own real life scary story that you would like featured on an episode on the channel, please do so using the email link in the description box below. As always, 
I do all the research, writing, recording, and editing for the channel myself, so anything that you do to support the channel is greatly appreciated. Until next time, I will see you all again as we head back into the cellar. Ah!